In the last video, we began to work with trig functions, and we went ahead and looked at some right triangles and looked at the angle of theta in a right triangle and applied the trig functions. Now let's do something else that they like to do now that we understand trig functions. Here's the kind of problem we can solve now. They're going to actually give us a trig function. They're going to say you have an angle where the sine of theta equals 4 over 7 and then what they want find the other trig functions for this angle. So we have an angle and we know that the sine of the angle, the sine of theta is 4 over 7. So we want to find what would the cosine of theta be, what would the tangent of theta be, the other five trig functions. Now there are actually two ways, two methods to go about solving this kind of problem. I prefer one way, and for the rest of this class, that's what I'll use most of the time. But there is a second way, and I'm not sure my way is the easier way. I just prefer that, and that's what I use. And I will show you both methods, and to be honest, you can use whichever method you want, whichever method works for you. They both should work correctly. One method is going to use a right triangle, and you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. But the second method are to use what I call some trig formulas or some trig equations. So let's first solve this problem using the idea of a right triangle. Now one thing I did not note up here, which to you will not really mean anything now, but later on it will. For this problem, if I looked at the exact wording, they also say the angle theta is acute. I don't know if we've discussed that yet. An acute angle means it's less than 90 degrees. An acute angle would be between 0 and 90 degrees. There's another word called obtuse, O-B-T-U-S-E. An obtuse angle would go from 90 to 180. So for this problem, we have an acute angle where the sine of theta is 4 over 7, find the trig functions. And I'm just telling you, later on you'll understand why it was important that we know this is an acute angle. So let's do this using a right triangle. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to do. We're told the sine of theta equals 4 over 7. And what did we learn is the definition <clears throat> of the sine if we're thinking about a right triangle. So ka toa, right? So, OH, opposite. over hypotenuse. 
When I talk about opposite hypotenuse, I'm referring to a right triangle. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to create a right triangle I'll just go and call this theta. And now, based upon the sine of theta, they told me, they've told us that the sine of theta is 4 over 7. I know 4 is the number for my opposite. 7 is my hypotenuse. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead, and this little triangle I've drawn, I'm going to say, well, that means if my theta is here, this is my opposite side, and this is my hypotenuse. So it's almost like we're going backwards. A little bit ago in the previous video, we took a right triangle, and we figured out the trig functions. In this case, we're given a trig function, and we're going to create a right triangle from that trig function. Now you notice... I've got two sides of the triangle. And if you remember, the Pythagorean formula allows us to find the third side of a right triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. As a matter of fact, as I'm doing this problem, let me go over here. Sometimes it helps when I sort of try and write down the steps we're following. So to solve this kind of problem, the first step is to create a right triangle from the trig function. That's what I've done. I've created this right triangle based upon the trig function I was given. Now the second step, which I'm going to do right now, whenever you create the right triangle from the trig function, there's always going to be, you're going to know two sides of the triangle. You're not going to know the third side. So the second step is always going to be to use the Pythagorean formula to determine the third side. So let's do that for our problem. I know the Pythagorean formula, since this is my hypotenuse, I know it says basically that 7 squared has to equal 4 squared, we'll just call this side A, plus A squared. So if you try and get the A by itself, A squared would be 49 minus 16, which is 33. So to get A, take the square root of both sides, it looks like side A is the square root of 33. Maybe I can even write it here. So now, I have a triangle, here's my angle theta, and I know all three sides of that triangle. So now, I can go and simply use my definitions of the trig functions to now find all the trig functions for that triangle. And I'll just make that my third step, just to be thorough. Use definition of trig functions for a right. I'm just going to say to finish. I don't write as much. So now that you know all three sides of this right triangle, we can use the definition of the trig functions to figure out all the rest of trig functions. So for example, let's do cosine. 
So ka, ka, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. What is the adjacent? In this case, the adjacent is the square root of 33. Hypotenuse is 7. Once again, we want exact answers for this kind of problem. We're not going to go grab our calculator. We're just going to leave the square root in the answer. How about tangent? So ka toa, toa, opposite over adjacent. The opposite would be 4, and the adjacent would be square root of 33. So the tangent of theta is 4 over square root of 33. Now I still have the three, what I like to term the not so important functions, and I usually just like to derive those from taking the reciprocals or flipping these functions. So for instance, the cosecant of theta is just the inverse of the sine, so if the sine is 4 over 7, cosecant must be 7 over 4. The secant of theta is just the inverse or the reciprocal of the cosine. So if I flip that, if I flip the cosine, I get 7 over square root of 33. And then finally, the last one, the cotangent of theta. I just take the inverse or the reciprocal of the tangent. If I flip this tangent, square root of 33 over 4. So reviewing quickly, in this case we were given an acute angle theta, and the sine of theta was 4 over 7, and we were to find the rest of the trig functions. So what we did Based upon the definition of the sine, we created a right triangle. We were able to fill in two of the sides. Then we used the Pythagorean formula to find the third side. And now once we have all three sides of the triangle, we can just go and apply all the definitions of the trig functions. So this is the method of using a right triangle. And this is the method I prefer to use myself. So anytime in this class we have to do something like this, I will probably draw up a right triangle, fill in the sides, and go from there. However, there is a second method, and who knows, maybe it's even easier, but anyways, it's involving using some of these, what we call trig formulas. So let me show you an example of how to solve the same problem using these trig formulas. So let me write down, once again, we were given the sine of theta is 4 over 7. We were told theta is an acute angle. Now, sometimes these I'm going to give you three trig formulas, and I'm going to quickly show you how they're derived, although one of them is used all the time. You'll just know it. The other two, you may want to memorize. I don't actually use them that much myself, but just so you know where they come from. Sometimes these are also called trig identities. Anyway, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Remember over here, if we have a right triangle. In this case, I'm going to call the hypotenuse R. I'm going to call this X and this Y. You can almost, anyways, let's just define the right triangle that way. Pythagorean formula tells us R squared equals X squared plus Y y squared. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this little Pythagorean, this little equation I derived from the Pythagorean form. I'm going to divide everything on both sides by r squared. 
If you remember in math, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides. I'm dividing both sides by r squared. And then look what happens. r squared of r squared is 1. And I'm going to rewrite this as x over r, that whole thing squared. These are the same. I'll do the same thing. Now, if we go back and if I call that my angle theta, do you know what x over r is? If I look at this right triangle, you know what the cosine of theta is? Adjacent of hypotenuse x, x over r. Do you know what? The sine of theta is, that's y over r. Look what I've got here, x over r. You know what I'm going to do? Instead of x over r, I'm going to write just the cosine of theta. Since it's squared, when we do trig functions, we put the little exponent there. y over r is sine of theta. You have sine squared of theta. Now the most common way to write this, and when students memorize it, they usually just say sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Very common, the most commonly used little formula in all of trig. You will use that all the time. This is the one you'll memorize, it's very simple. Now there are two more that involve like tangent and secant and cotangent and cosecant. I'm actually not going to take the time to derive those now. They're in your book and you can look at them. I actually don't use them that much. And I just want to show you that it's possible now to solve this problem using this formula. So by that, here's how you do it. We know that the sine of theta is 4 sevenths. Let's plug in 4 sevenths for the sine of theta here. So since it's sine squared, it's 4 sevenths squared plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. You notice in this little equation, there's only one thing that I don't know, cosine of theta. I'm going to actually solve this equation for cosine of theta. So I'll get cosine squared of theta by itself. I'm going to subtract this from both sides. If you look, when I square this, it's going to be 16 over 49. So I'm going to subtract 16 over 49 from both sides. Now I have to do a little bit of math with fractions. In order to subtract these, I have to convert 1 to have my common denominator 49. So it becomes 49 over 49 minus 16 over 49. So finally, I'm left with 33 over 49. So this is cosine squared of theta. Now, if I want to solve for cosine of theta, what do I do? Take the square root of both sides, end up with cosine of theta equals square root of 32 over 7, since the square root of 49 is 7. And if you look, here's my previous notes, what did I find the cosine to be with my right triangle? Square root of 33 over 7. And if I was using this method now to find the tangent, I would just go ahead and remember, tangent is sine over cosine. The sine is 4 sevenths. The cosine is square root of 33 over 7. If you do a little algebra, this simplifies to 4 over square root of 33. And you'll see that's the same, same thing we found earlier. All right, so that's an example of 
solving this kind of problem using these trig formulas. I'm going to do one more very quick example just to give you another example. It's going to be a little more complicated. I don't think it's not that hard, but at first, if you read this one on your own, you probably think it's more difficult. How about this problem? Once again, acute angle. In this case, they say you got an angle theta and the secant of theta equals two. I'll just write it here. And this is another acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees. We want to find all the other trig functions. All right, I've told you a few times now, whenever I deal with what I call sort of these minor trig functions, I try not to work with them. What I do as soon as possible, I try and convert them to either sine, cosines, or even tangent. If you remember secant, secant is linked up to the cosine. Matter of fact, the cosine would be the reciprocal or the inverse of the secant. Of course, here, it's a little confusing because it's not a fraction. It's just a number. Well, we can always turn a number into a fraction, right? Just make it 2 over 1. So therefore, the cosine of theta is just a reciprocal must be one half. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a right triangle and use that to figure out the rest of the trig functions. So cosine, so ka, ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if this is my angle, the adjacent must be here. The hypotenuse must be here. And now I'm going to use the Pythagorean formula to find this other side. We'll call it A. So I know the Pythagorean formula says that my hypotenuse squared must equal one of the sides squared plus the other side squared. So basically this is 4 equals 1 plus a squared. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I think I end up with 3 equals a squared, or I can say a is the square root of 3. And now I have the three sides of the right triangle. I can go ahead and just use my trig definition. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I already know the cosine here. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, square root of three over one, which is a square root of three. How about cosecant? is the reciprocal of the sine, 2 over square root of 3. Oh, we already know the secant. We were given the secant, so the last one is a cotangent, it's a reciprocal of the tangent. All right, so hopefully when you do those on the homework, you will not find them too difficult.